The Soundcraft UI24, which I've got here, is a fantastic piece of kit. Now, I've had this for quite a few months now, and there have been one or two little teething problems with it, but it's mostly down to settings and a few extra little bits and pieces that really will catapult this from being a great desk into being a fantastic one. Let's have a look. First thing you might notice at the moment is that there's a little bit of noise on this recording and it's nothing to do with the electronics, it's to do with the fact that I've put a cooling fan in this. I use this basically for live work. I've got other equipment in my studio for audio interfaces. But you are listening to this presentation via the desk. I've got a mic plugged into channel 10 here and you can see that flicking up and down on the display of my HDMI display there and it's going into my computer, it's going into Logic via USB. And it's very, very clean. They are pretty good preamps on this. Now, people have reported that the levels on the computer seem to be very, very low. Well, actually, it's not the case. It's the fact that the metering here looks a little bit different from the metering on a digital audio workstation in that most of the meter that you can see is all the quiet levels, the minus 50, 40, 30, all of that. When you get up towards the top, towards zero, there's actually only three little bars between zero and minus six, and that's quite a lot. Minus six represents half of the electrical recording level of zero dB. It's a three dB difference for acoustics or speakers, but for electronic recording level, it's minus six dB. So when I'm speaking at the moment, it's sort of peaking at minus six, and you can see on Logic Pro, if I just bring up the other screen, I'll just reset the little, um, little meter thing there. If I speak at minus six, you can see that it's coming into the computer at minus six. Now you can also record on a pen drive. I've got this tiny little SanDisk pen drive here that has to be high speed and you can put that in the front here. Now I've done a similar experiment with this where I've recorded something at this level, brought it into the computer and actually there is no difference in level at all. I think really Soundcraft have thought this through. Of course, they think everything through. They've been designing really quality stuff for years and years and years. You don't want to over record things or to distort the inputs of your desk because when you get back into the studio and you remix the gig that you've just done, it's going to be a bit of a pickle if you have over recorded things. So that's, I think, for me, that's part of the reason that they have designed it this way. So there is no level difference at all. You've just got to be a little bit more bold with your input levels. Now, of course, being a 24-bit uh, converter, it's not going to be the massive problem if you have under-recorded something, because you can just boost it using um, some plugins on your digital audio workstation with no sort of noticeable degree of loss of quality or any introduction of any noise. Indeed, the fan that you're hearing at the moment would be far higher in level anyway. Now, of course, when you're on a gig, you won't hear that cooling fan. Now, I did have one or two problems where the desk would suddenly reset itself. It would just reboot without warning and suddenly the main PA would be silent for a second or two until it came back. Now obviously that's going to be a bit of an issue especially if you've charged a lot of money for your, the wedding gig that you're doing. However those problems have now gone. Now one other thing that I have done is to disconnect or to switch off the internal hotspot on this. Now I do have this HDMI display which is just permanently connected to the desk and it does everything that I want it to do. You can get bigger displays which enable the big D mode which enable you to see all the input channels and your effects and all of that but I just make do with this. In fact I think it's very easy especially if you have if you have this on stage and you are doing your own sound, it's all too easy to just keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking without thinking, well, actually, we're here to play music. The desk simply does its job and outputs through your speakers. So if I really do need to make fine adjustments, you just search and find your aux sends or your reverbs or whatever it is that you need to tweak. Now, I've also got a Wi-Fi router here. Now, you can connect 10 devices up to this. The Wi-Fi router is 30 pounds. It's not very expensive at all, but it makes a massive difference. The internal Wi-Fi of this is great if you're just in a small room, maybe away from other Wi-Fi routers or other networks, 
happened. If you're in a marquee in the middle of nowhere doing a wedding, it's probably going to be OK. However, it does show its weakness. Don't forget, this is just put on to sort of get you going, just, just to get you started. But with a decent Wi-Fi router, you're really good to go and you can still use your 10 devices connected to this. That's really impressive. Address-wise, there is another good video which I have included the link to below which talks about what an IP address is. Lots of people th just think, you know, that you should know these things and that it's easy and you should know about them and people laughing at you if you say you use a particular number over another when in reality they just need to get some mates and go down the pub a bit more. Now, I have set the address here to be 172.168.1. Dot two. We just settled on that. Most networks, if you're at home, use the 192.168 addresses. But if you select an address that's far away from that, the chances are you're not going to get any crosstalk. Now, this is a tr this is the trouble. When you have a very, very strong Wi-Fi network, say you're playing in a hotel or a big venue where there are Wi-Fi transmitters everywhere, another Wi-Fi network on that sort of in that same building, may indeed be swamped by, you know, the, the strong networks. So I've got this Wi-Fi router set at 172.168.1.2, and it does seem to work. It doesn't suddenly sort of throw off the, the Wi-Fi and somebody can't connect anymore because the Wi-Fi has been swamped. I haven't found it to be an issue yet, but of course, you are going to, this is a computer after all, and it is competing with many other devices that surround it. If you have the HDMI connection here, and you can also, of course, wire this uh, to a physical laptop or a computer for extra degree of control so that you can always get to those desk controls should you find a problem with it. However, since I've done these two things, a cooling fan at £7, a Wi-Fi router at £30, I did spend about £100 on the, or more, on the HDMI display, and I've also bought a case. So a mixer that costs, cost me about £700, it's more like £1,000 once you've got everything in place. But believe me, it's a thousand quid, very well spent. Not only is this a fully fledged mixing desk with all the processing, it is also a multi-track recorder onto this and a multi-way audio interface all in one box. What's not to like about that?